Okay, so today we're gonna do 4-5 multivariable linear systems and row operations. So this is working with systems of equations with three variables. If you did the bonus week stuff, we did an activity with systems of equations with three variables in which you used substitution and elimination and combination to get rid of variables. So that's kind of what's happening here. Multivariable linear system is a system of equations in two or more variables. So we're going to be focusing on three variables. Row echelon form is a method to write the system, and it turns into this triangular form. So the idea is to eliminate one of the variables at a time. So we have x, y, and z, then we eliminate down to just y and z, and eliminate to z, so then we can substitute backwards to solve this. So we're not going to be using a similar idea to row echelon form, but we're going to be setting it into a special triangle. So once the system is in this form, the solutions again can be found using substitutions. Operations that produce equivalent systems are you can interchange any two equations in the position they're in. You can multiply one of the equations by a non-zero number. So you can multiply any one equation by a number as long as you multiply all the terms. And you can add a multiple of one of the equations to another. So you can add equations together. Okay, so those are the operations we're going to be focusing on those are the only operations we can use. Okay. So augmented matrix is derived from the coefficients in the constant term of a linear equation. It's written in standard form with constant forms to the right of the equal sign. The coefficient matrix is when the constant column is not included. So we're going to write the augmented matrix for the system of equations. I'm going to do this one, and then you can do the one next to it. So basically, you're going to get all the coefficients. Remember, if there's no number there, there's a 1. So we're going to fill in all the 1s. And then we're going to write the coefficients for w actually we got w x y's and z's so we're going to write w x y and z so we don't forget our alphabet okay and i started doing this without thinking about that so we're going to write there's a w so that's a one the x is four y is not there so it would be a zero and z is one and then we're going to put a dash line going down and put our answer on the other side of the line and then for this one, we have no W, so that's a 0. X is 1, Y is 2, Z is negative 3, and the 0 is the answer. For the next row, we have a W is 1. There is no X, so that's 0. Y is negative 3, Z is negative 8, and the answer is negative 1. And for the last row, W is 3, X is 2, Y is 3, Z is not there, so it would be 0, and then 9. So this is an augmented matrix. So again, pay attention to the letters that are there. Um, make sure you include all variables and then do alphabetical. So list your variables in alphabetical order and give zeros for any variable that is missing. So you're going to do the same thing for B. And that's called an augmented matrix. So elementary row operations, each of the following row operations produce an equivalent augmented matrix. If we interchange any two rows, which is similar to these rules we just read, if we multiply any row by a non-zero number, or if we row any, add any rows together. So row operations are termed elementary because they're simple to perform. However, it is easy to make a mistake. So really record each step using the notations illustrated below. So this is if we had a system of equations and we wanted to solve it. These over here is what we had done in the previous lessons with systems of equations, where we said, okay, how are we gonna get these to be the same? What are we gonna to do? And then we started performing the operations. So this tells you what we were doing. Normal system equations here is how we write it in augmented. So if we we're gonna take, if we took one fifth of the original equation, then we would do one fifth of the equation we write it as one fifth of row one. And then down here, we added equation one and two together, so row one plus row two. So this is just kind of a format of how it's set up. We're gonna actually do some problems to see how to do this. So row echelon form, if a matrix is in row echelon forms, it must meet the following conditions. The rows consist of zeros if any appear at the bottom of the matrix. So if we have a row of all zeros, it would be at the bottom. I don't know how often that would occur, but you do put any zero row at the bottom. The first non-zero entry in a row is always one. So there's a one, and that's called the leading one. For each row underneath, as you notice, there's zeros under the whole row. And then the second row, we have a number first, then we go to a one, and then zeros. And then we follow that pattern along. 
Okay, so we're gonna work one to zeros. And when you work, you always work down each column one at a time. Okay, so determine whether each matrix is in row echelon form. Again, it needs to be one down to zero in the first row. The second row needs to then have a number and then go one down to zero. And then that pattern needs to continue, which it does here. So this is a yes. So you're going to do the next two. Make sure it goes one down to zero and then number and then keeps counting down. So we should look at the diagonal, okay, and kind of really focus on that, like you see up in the example here. To solve a system of equations using augmented matrix and Gaussian elimination, you're going to change the system to row echelon form and then write the corresponding steps. So reduce row echelon form, again, should start with ones going on the diagonal here, okay? And we're going to actually not have any row zeros in R, so this row will not be there. Okay, so we're going to have the one, one, and then the zeros in the corners. So that's how they're all going to be set up. Get rid of the last row here because we won't see any like that. So let's go through and do some problems. So the first thing we're going to do is write the augmented matrix. And we're not going to use, we're going to use uh, just bars. So we're going to write like this. And we're going to put our 1, then negative 1, then 1, and then our dashed line. And 0 is the answer. For the next one, we have negative 1, 2, negative 3, and negative 5 is the answer. And then we have 2, negative 3, 5, and 8 is the answer. Okay, so that's our original. So now what we have to do is our goal is, and it always starts in the first corner, this needs to be a one. If it's a one, the first step is done, okay, which it is. So then we go to the draw another one. Try to, I guess I wrote too big the first time. We might need more room, so kind of try not to be right as big as me. The goal is to now keep the first row as it is, because you can only change one row at a time. And the goal now is to make a zero here, okay? So in order to get zero, we can only work with the rows. So our only options are to multiply the row by something or to add it to another row or to multiply and add at the same time. So if I wanted to make a zero here, if I look up here with the numbers I have, I have a negative one. I could work with the two or the one. If I add one and negative one, I get zero. So I would say that's the easiest thing. What did I do? I added row one plus row two. So I added the number in row one plus the number in row two and I got zero. So now we do that all the way. Negative one plus two is one. One plus negative three is negative two. Zero plus negative five is negative five. And then we keep the other rows exactly the same. So you're only working one row at a time and you're only making one change at a time. So now we have our one and our zero. If we think of our triangle, remember we have to make all these zeros and all these ones. We go down the columns. So now we need to work in this bottom column. So we're gonna keep the first row the same. We're gonna keep the second row the same. And we need to change this number to zero. Okay, what we have to work with are the numbers that are here. We need to make this a zero is our goal. So I, if I look at this, you cannot multiply no rows together. You can only multiply the row by itself, but if we multiply by zero, it would disappear everything, so that wouldn't work. Or we can add or subtract. So I see a two and a one, and I can't add those to make zero, but if I take row three, the two, and minus two times row one, so I take 2 and I minus 2 times 1, 2 minus 2 times 1 would give me 0. So now i got to follow that for each of the other ones. So I take the negative 3 and I minus 2 times, or negative 3 minus 2 times negative 1. That would end up 2 times negative 1 would become plus. So negative 3 plus 1 is negative 2. And then I do 5 minus 2 times 1, which would be 3. And 8 minus 2 times 0 is still 8. Okay. So now we go, and we got that one taken care of. So we draw the matrix again. 
Now we have our one zero. So the next spot we would be working with is right here, making sure this is a one. And since it's already a one, I'm just gonna underline it here because that's all set already. So we don't have to rewrite it. You can rewrite it, but there's no change. It's already one. So now we're gonna keep the first row the same. And we're gonna keep the second row the same. And our goal is to make this number zero now. So we're kind of working down the rows. We got our one here, now we need a zero. So how do we make the negative two a zero? Okay. I'm gonna say, okay, what do I have for numbers? I'm gonna use this number here because if I use a top one, then there's not a zero over here, it might mess you. Always wanna work the row, two rows next to each other. So I'm gonna do two times row two plus row three. Because if I take two times one is two plus negative two, I'll get zero. So two times zero is zero plus zero is zero. Two times one is two plus negative two is zero. Two times negative two is negative four plus three is negative one. And two times negative five is negative 10 plus eight is negative two. So we're almost done. We've got our zeros down here, our one, one, and we almost have a one, but it's a negative one. So the last step is to change that number. So we keep the first row, we keep the second row, and then the third row, we need to change this to a, a positive one. And the easiest way to change a negative one to a positive one is to multiply row three by a negative sign. So it changes a sign and it will change the two to positive as well. So now we have our triangular form. See how those are all ones and these are all zeros underneath. Once we're in that form to solve, if you remember we did x, y, z. So if we go to the bottom equation, this is one z equals two. So z would be two. And then we work backwards. The equation above is one y minus two z equals negative five. We now know z, so we have one y minus two times two equals negative five. y minus four equals negative five. y equals negative one. So we have z, we have y. And then if we keep working that out, if we go to the top row, that is one x minus one y plus one z equals zero. So we plug that in, we have one x minus one times negative one plus one times two equals zero. x plus two plus two equals zero. x equals negative four. So the answer would be negative four, negative one, positive two. We always list them alphabetical, A. Eh? Okay, so now we're gonna go to B. Do the same thing, so we're gonna set up our matrix first. Four, nine, 16, two. Negative one, negative two, negative four, negative one. Two, four, nine, negative five. Okay, so then once we set the matrix up, what are we gonna do next? We're going to make sure that our upper corner is one, which it is not one. So to get to be one, we could start doing some operations or because this one has a one, we could switch these two and then we could get a one on the top. So I'm gonna rewrite this so that this one comes on top, but I want it to be positive one. So I'm going to make it change the signs on everything in that row so that it's positive one. So I, what I basically did in this case, I'm gonna rewrite the row two, uh, the, switch the rows. So I switched these two rows, okay? So I switched row one and row two, but I took row two and multiplied it by negative one. So I switched the rows, but I also multiplied row two by negative one. So now it's all positive. One, two, four, one, 
4, 9, 16, 2. The bottom row is 2, 4, 9, negative 5. And now I have my 1 in the upper corner. So now my next step, keep the first row the same. Because I'm working right here. I need to make that a 0. So to make that a 0, the quickest thing I see is with 4 and 2, I say, okay, I'm going to take row 2 and minus 2 times row 3. So 4 minus 2 times 2 would be 0. Okay. And then 9 minus 2 times 4 is 1. 16 minus 2 times 9 would be 16 minus 18, which is negative 2. 2 minus 2 times negative 5 would be 2 plus 10, which is, or 2 plus 10 is 12. And then the bottom row stays the same. Okay, and now we gotta go to the next spot. So we're gonna keep, remember we go down the row columns, so we're gonna be at the bottom one. So we're gonna keep the first two the same. And we're gonna be working right here. How do we make this zero? Okay, so if I want to make this 0, I look at the 2 and the 1, and I can see looking at the 2 and 1, if I do 2 times row 1 minus row 3, 2 times 1 is 2 minus 2 is 0, 2 times 2 is 4, minus 4 is 0, 2 times 4 is 8, minus 9 is negative 1, right, so 2 times 4 is 8, Minus 9 is negative 1. 2 times 1 is 2. Minus a negative 5 would be negative, or sorry, 7. 2 minus a negative would be 7. Okay. So now I've got that, and I go, okay, what's the next step? The next step would be to make this a 1. Well, look, it already is a 1. So then what would be my next step? To make this number a 0, but it already is. So I don't have to do that. So the next step is to make this a negative, a positive one. So we're looking, we're seeing our triangle. It's almost perfect except for this bottom one. So we're going to keep the first row the same, the second row the same, and the bottom row we're going to multiply everything. So row three is going to get multiplied by negative one. So that makes a zero still zero. The one be negative one becomes one, and the seven becomes negative seven. And now we've got our row echelon going on here. So now we're going to work backwards. Z, 1z equals negative 7, so z is negative 7. And then we have 1y minus 2z equals 12. 1y minus 2 times negative 7 equals 12. y plus 14 equals 12. y equals negative 2. And then we got to go back up to the first row which is 1x plus 2y plus 4z equals 1. 1x plus 2 times negative 2 plus 4 times negative 7 equals 1. x minus 4 minus 28 equals 1. x minus 32 equals 1. x equals 33. So the answer is 33 negative 2, negative 7. So now you're going to have to figure out and follow that process to do 1 and 2 on the next page. Same steps.